Hello, hello. As you can see in, f in front of me, I have three different carburetors. I know they may look the same, but they are indeed different. So what do we got here? We got a 1.6 liter base model carburetor. We have a 1.6 liter high output carburetor, and we have a 1.9 liter carburetor. I don't believe these vary at all, because when the 1.9 came out, you had the engines op engine options of carbureted, uh, central fuel injection, and then the electronic fuel injection high output, and that's the one that has the neat valve covers, air, in, air intake manifold, and headers. But, so, like I said, this is the 1.6, the 1.6 high output, and the 1.9. Uh, we'll get into these. So there's not much for differences on the outsides. All three are interchangeable. They all fit on top of the same bores, or the same intake manifold bores, I should say. The, the only notable differences I've found is that for some reason the 1.9 has two vacuum uh, nipples here, whereas on all my 1.6 engines you can see that Ford had omitted them. Or just not install them, whatever. I, I don't know. But uh, this one has it. These do not. The one I also has a bigger vacuum diaphragm housing for either choke or high idle. I can't remember. And then the one six has a smaller one, as you can see. Oh, I'll rotate around so you can see that better. Um, so that's the little guy in the one six. And that is the big sucker on the one nine. 1.9 also has a slightly different electric choke. Um, my 1.6, I had already switched it out for a manual one. I'll have a video on that manual choke conversion sometime soon. Because um, that is a, a decent upgrade to do. And then this one, someone had removed, but otherwise it would look the same as that. Next up for differences on the outside. Um... This one's an AC, or th this one's from a car that had AC. The only difference is you have this uh, this kick down uh, vacuum system. So it's just a, a vacuum housing with a diaphragm inside, and it's got a little bracket that allows you to attach it onto any of these carbs. And so you can take any of these cars and add this on as long as you have. Uh, well, obviously the housing, but you also need to have that little lever that these don't have because they're not equipped with it. But if you wanted to go from one to the other, you just got to move that lever, move that housing. So, now for the nitty gritty of the performance. So I'll flip all these over and we'll, uh, we'll compare what they have for Venturi's. Because this is actually rather interesting. You never had a. If you've never had these side by side, you probably never know, unless you just read forums heavily. But the one six has the smallest venturies. I haven't measured them out yet. I will, and I'll include all three of them in the description. But the one six, I'll just tell you, it has the smallest ones. Uh, the one six high output seems to have the biggest ones. And the 1.9 is uh, either the same as one of those two or somewhere in between. This isn't the smallest, it's not the biggest, that's the biggest, that's the smallest. Um, as shut such because one point, uh, small displacement, good on fuel economy, small displacement, good on power, larger displacement, yeah, that's the only carburetor they made for the one nines is what you see in front of me. So I'll flip these back around and we'll take the lids off them because once, once I remove the lids, we, we get to see a, a few other different things. So this is the one nine and look carefully, you'll, you'll notice that it only has one, one choke butterfly or shaft. Uh, someone had robbed it already, but there's only one. And you can see that the other side isn't cast with any. I find that particularly interesting. I'd like to know how well that choke system compares to a normal 1.6. Because these have 
two butterflies for choke. Um, same with the high output, two butterflies for choke. But I reckon you could um, switch the high output housing. Actually, you probably switch all three of these housings around, except this one. This one has a little uh, electronic solenoid um, that open and closes a vacuum port. I, th I believe it's for some sort of fuel shutoff thing. Um, Anyways, that's the only difference in the casting between these three is this one has it and the high output carb and the 1.9 carb does not. Which also means that this top half is different than the others because it has that port there. The other two don't have it. Um, they're all casted with that hole. So, yeah, you, you could switch all three of these around. Oh, no, nope, maybe not. Okay, so the 1.9 and the normal 1.6 you can switch around. The high output one does not have the hole in the casting for whatever that electronic solenoid vacuum shut off fuel thing is. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure out what that is and have that in the description too. But uh, remember I had said that the Venturis and Butterflies are different sizes? It's pretty evident here once you take the lids off. Um, oh, I wanted to note that the, uh, the sizes of the Choke Butterflies all seem to be the same. I can't tell if one's bigger than the other, so I don't think it is. Uh, but the main Venturis, you can see that the 1.9 is fairly small around the outside, and then... The venturi for the fuel itself is is rather thick with a very small inner diameter. The normal 1.6 is a fairly large uh, outside venturi and a very thin and very uh, full, we'll say full, it's a very big hole and the, the casting is really thin around here for the fuel inlet and then same with the high output. I believe the only difference is that on the bottom of the high output, remember that the butterflies are bigger, uh, thus making the venturi bigger. So the inlet is the same size, so your air is moving towards this at the same rate, or at the same volume, I mean. But once it goes past the venturi, this one sucks more, more air than that or that does. Next, all, I think all that's left is the jetting. The jetting's very interesting, and that's what I was curious about the most. Because I didn't think the 1.6 carbs would vary much, except for the jetting. Because I know that the high output engines, they have a, um, a high lift camshaft. Uh, something is different in the carb because they have a different part number. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And the high output engines also have taller pistons for better compression and headers. So there's a lot less restriction in the engine, or should I say the, the way the intake and exhaust flows through the head in and out of it. So I thought that this would uh, have bigger jets in it, but that's not the case. So this is the normal 1.6. Um, my camera, you might not see it, but this one, this jet is labeled 160, this one's 220. Obviously, the bigger the number, the more fuel you have going through it. Uh, so, the primary is a 160 for cruising. So, whenever you're cruising, you're not sucking much fuel. But you put your foot to the floor, open up the secondary, now you're dumping in that 220 jet down into your secondary, and you'll, you'll go pretty quick. Um... So for comparison, we'll just add up the two. So 160 and 220 is 380. And we go to the high output carb. This is interesting. Remember I said this one has less restriction in all of the airflow between the exhaust and the intake. But they shrunk the jets on this guy. This has 150 in each, uh, which adds up to 300, obviously. So 300 versus the uh, 
380, pretty big difference. And that's really surprising, because whenever there's less restriction, you, you, in theory, have more air. So you should need more fuel to go with it, but they less fuel with this. But it's a lot smaller difference between the, the primary and the secondary. Um, so maybe throttle comes on smoother. I'm not sure. Uh, sometime we'll play around with jet settings between all three of these. We'll also play around with normal carb settings between all three of these. I'll, I'll interchange them all on the same engine and we'll see what the performance gains are and then we'll interchange the jets and see how that goes. The 1.9 for jets it has, if the camera focuses again, it probably ain't. But if you can see it, it's 165 there and 150 there adds up to a 315. So again, that's uh, the most amount of fuel, uh, the second most amount of fuel, and the least amount of fuel, which is surprising because this one already has much better airflow. So I reckon these run real lean. And I'm not quite sure why, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the taller pistons uh, level it out. I don't know. But yeah, that's about all there is for differences between these. Um, but again, I'll put all these comparisons in the description so you can view them all side by side. Um, because between what you see and what I say, it's not always the most comparative. But when I put all the numbers on the board and I show you what what they all mean, uh, maybe that helps. Um, so, yeah, I think the deal was that, you know, that this was good for economy but still offered performance. This was probably good for intermediate performance and then this was just... They threw it on the engine and it worked. <laughs> you know, but... Like I said, I'm going to try all three of these out sometime on my engine. And that engine, I'm almost done rebuilding it. It's got headers, uh, catless exhaust, higher high flow muffler, custom tubing through the exhaust. Uh, I think it's got a, a bigger diameter pipe all the way through. And then it's got a it's got the factory high output camshaft. I ported the intake side. It's getting a one nine intake manifold because they're bigger. And we, uh, the head's been shaved, so the compression's a little higher. So uh, we'll play around with these, and we'll figure out which one is best for me. Um, that will be very interesting, because as soon as I figure out which one's best, I'm going to order as many as I can. I'm also going to see if I can get um, jet kits from Weber. I use kits loosely because I'd buy um, like a, a, a giant plastic case just full of Weber jets, uh, you know, two of each size and like 20 different sizes. So I can fine tune my power curve and my fuel efficiency. That would be really cool. I'd be pumping out 100 horsepower and still get 30 to 40 miles per gallon. <laughs> That'd be terrific. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to these. 